In this week's episode, I'll restore this little cabinet. This project was a nice change of pace for me. I don't get many opportunities to work on this style of furniture. It needed a lot of work. The finish was obviously in really bad shape. It needed some veneer repair. And there was a small decorative piece missing on the bottom of the door, and I'd have to recreate that. I began by stripping off the old finish, and I just used a paint scraper for this. I think the original finish was shellac, and it was really brittle and was pretty easy to scrape off. For the turnings and the spots that were a little harder to get into with the big scraper, I used a card scraper. The top was really a mess, and there actually wasn't even that much finish left on it, but there were areas that were really dark. And I was thinking that I might need to use oxalic acid to remove the dark stains, but most of that came off when I removed the little bit of finish that was on there. And once it was cleaned up, there were a few faint dark marks but I didn't think it was worth using oxalic acid on the whole thing just to get those out. What was left of the little decorative piece on the door came off easily with just a little heat from the heat gun to melt the glue and then I could just pop it right off. And once the finish was off, I gave the whole thing a light sanding. I was expecting to find walnut veneer under the old finish, but once I had the finish off, it didn't look like walnut to me. My best guess is that it's rosewood, just judging by the dark, overall color and those black streaks running through it. The corner pieces and the legs on the other hand are not rosewood. Uh, they're a much lighter colored wood and probably a cheaper wood. So those I'll be putting some stain on later on to bring them a little closer to the color of the veneer. Next, it was time to make a new decorative piece for the bottom of the door. But first, I took the door off just to make it easier to work on, and that just involved removing a few screws. I only had a little bit of the original piece, but I could see a shadow on the door 
of where the rest of it used to be. So that gave me an idea of the shape that it was. And I'm not a carver by any means, so I wasn't trying to make anything really ornate. I just wanted to make something that would look good and would take the place of the missing piece. I started by taking a piece of wood and I put it behind the door and then just traced the outline of the door onto the wood. And that would be the bottom of the piece. And then I took the small piece of the original that I had and used that to get the rest of the shape. And I just flipped it over to do the other side. And the parts in between, I just made that part up. Once I had the shape drawn out, I cut it out on a jigsaw and started carving. The section of fancy burled veneer in the middle of the door had a bunch of spots where the veneer had chipped off. One of those spots, I still had the piece that came off, so I just glued that right back on. For the other sections that were missing, I didn't have the veneer pieces that came off, and I didn't have any veneer that matched this, so I decided to repair those spots with some wood filler instead, and then touch it up with some color to try to blend it in. Which wasn't too difficult because the grain pattern is so random on this piece of veneer, it, it wouldn't be too hard to blend in a repair. I used a water-based wood filler, and the brand is called Timbermate. It comes in a bunch of different colors, and I chose one that was a little bit light, but it was a good start. And I started by layering thin layers of veneer and letting it dry. And I actually used a hair dryer just to help speed it along. And as each layer dried, I'd put another thin layer over it until I built it up to where it was flush with the top of the veneer. And it helps while you're applying the filler to take your finger and wet it a little bit with some water and smooth out the filler as you go. And then you'll have less sanding that you have to do later. So once it was dry, I sanded it down flat. And then I took some dyes, and I think I used some brown dye and some amber dye, and just started getting the color a little closer to the veneer.
and just gradually kept adding more color until it started to blend in. And at this point, I thought it looked pretty good and it looked almost like that darker spot in the middle of the veneer. And I just kept layering color until it looked like it was blending in well. And it was just a lot of trial and error. Then it was time to do some staining and I only used the stain on the corner pieces and the legs because those were a different type of wood than the veneer and they were a lot lighter. And this is a walnut colored gel stain. Once the stain was dry, I could add the top coat. And in this case, I'm using a simple shellac finish. The shellac I'm using is called Zinzer Seal Coat, and it comes in a can. It's a pretty thin shellac to begin with, but I thinned it even further by adding some denatured alcohol. So it's half seal coat and half denatured alcohol which just makes it easier to apply. And I'm just wiping it on with a rag. I probably added about three or four coats. When the shellac was dry, I buffed it out a bit with some fine steel wool and some wax, just to cut down the sheen a little bit. And when I waxed the turnings on the legs, I rubbed the raised portions a little bit more with the steel wool just to try to wear the finish off a little bit to make them look a little lighter as if that was the old finish on there just to sort of give the illusion of some age as opposed to a brand new finish. And then it was time to add the decorative piece to the door, which I just glued on with a few drops of glue. And I also stained this piece. And after I glued it on here, I thought it looked a little too dark. So I went over it again with some lighter gel stain, just to try to adjust the color a little bit. And here it is, all finished.
Thanks for watching.